one body in Christ, and we do not stand alone. When you eat my body and you drink my blood, I will live in you, and you will live in my love. When you eat my body and you drink my blood, I will live in you, and you will live in my love. We are one body, one body in Christ. And we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ. And He came that we might have life. Can you hear them crying? Can you feel their pain? Will you feed my hungry? Will you help my pain? See the unborn baby, the forgotten one. They are not. Good morning. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, also known as Corpus Christi Sunday. It's good to have you all here. Today, because it's also Father's Day, Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the souls of all our fathers, and it'll be celebrated for, well, the intention of our fathers who are still with us. So, to put that a little bit more succinctly, uh, Mass will be celebrated today for all our fathers living and deceased. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You You are are a priest priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, 
sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest priest forever forever in the the line line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You You are are a priest priest forever forever in the the line line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor, before the day star like the dew I have begotten you. You You are are a priest priest forever forever in the line line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn an oath he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You You are are a priest priest forever forever in the the line line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Father, may I have your blessing. May Almighty God bless you that you will worthily proclaim the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be healed. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about five thousand. Then he said to his disciples, I have have them sit down in groups of about fifty, They did so, and made them all sit down. Then, taking the five loaves and two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, welcome and hello. Uh, Glad you're here joining us on our YouTube channel on this very, very special day where we celebrate and remember uh, the holy bread, uh, body and blood of Christ, what we call Corpus Christi, his real presence in the bread and wine at Eucharist. And also, Father's Day. Uh, Please let me be the, if I'm not the first, at least one in a line to say, Happy Father's Day to all you guys out there, and glad you're here with us today. Uh, What I'd like to talk about uh, this uh, morning is Melchizedek and that exchange that he has with Abraham, but really more focused on Abraham. Before we get into this, though, something I want to share with you. 
uh, there's a lot more to this story than what we heard in the first reading. So let me give you some, some background here. Uh, chapter 14 starts with four kings that have come into the region, this particular region of, of Israel, as we understand it in our current uh, context, and they have taken over other kings, other kingdoms uh, in the area. And these kingdoms that they had conquered eventually rebel. And as wouldn't you know it, the four kings that came in and conquered, they win again. Only this time they take a lot of the possessions. Uh, they take uh, some of Abraham's family members, Lot, his nephew. And you may remember the name Lot from the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom was one of these kingdoms that was taken over. Long story short, Abraham says, enough is enough. He rallies some allies, builds an army, and they end up routing these conquering kings. They chase them all the way north to Damascus, which is now Syria. Um, bring those possessions back, and as well as the, as the people and his family members, Lot and his family. So that's where we pick up the story of this mysterious priest king named Melchizedek. We don't know a whole lot about Melchizedek, but we know two things, that he was the king of Salem. And by the way, Salem is an archaic or ancient name for Jerusalem, but also he is a priest. We know that. And so he has this special relationship with God. Now, here's something else we all recognize now in the year 2022, and that is that Melchizedek, and I'll use a fancy word, prefigures Christ. That just means he's Christ-like. We heard that in our responsorial song. But what's interesting is how Abraham behaves. So, Back to the story, we had Abraham conquering these uh, aggressive kings. So he's beat the kings that be kings. Pretty impressive stuff. I don't even know if there's an award for that. But he's on top of the mountain. He's the leader. He's rallied the allies. He's routed the foes. And so he's returned with all those possessions, with all those people. And... What we see Abraham do is he's recognizing something wonderful. He's recognizing the kingship of Melchizedek. He's recognizing the priesthood of Melchizedek. You know, Abraham could have come back and said, I just, I just conquered kings of kings. I can do what I want. No, he doesn't do that. He could have sat on the throne. He could have easily taken it. But he didn't. He used his power wisely. He comes back and he is, def he is deferred to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek blesses him, serves him bread and wine. And in exchange, we, re we hear that Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Not only did he conquer, he comes back and from his own pool, gives money to Melchizedek. He's paying homage to Melchizedek. This prefiguration or this, this, ex, this Christ-like example. And there's something in there that we can learn ourselves when we come up to the altar, when we enter the, the space at the altar, we too should be like Abraham. Here's another piece of the story that we don't get to read, and that is, after this blessing, the king of Sodom tries to pay Abraham. And what does Abraham do? He rejects it. He says, no, no, no thanks. I appreciate it, no thanks. We'll just take what we've already consumed in food and be about our way. But you know what? king of Sodom, it would be really wonderful if you could at least take care of my allies. And that's how this chapter ends. So what can we learn from Abraham's behavior here? 
Well, one, and probably foremost, humility. Abraham is humble. He could have taken over. He could have been the new king, but he didn't. He restored and kept civility. He restored peace. He was a peacemaker. So there's a lot we can learn on this Father's Day. You know, when we think about it, we as men have a lot of power. Our children are, you know, especially our younger children are powerless over us. We might not think so, but they really don't have that power. We can be domineering. We can be downright scary at times if we want to be. And sometimes rightfully so. But what we're learning is that we need to use our power, our influence in the right ways, in godly ways that God appreciates and rewards with blessings. So one of the things that I'm going to ask, and you guys know I always give homework, one of the things I'm going to ask is, after, after Mass, go read Genesis 14. And I want you to ask yourself a question. If I were in this story, if I, if I pretended that I was Abraham in this story, how would I respond? Would I respond the same way with humility or would I keep those spoils? Um, the other thing I want you to do is think about asking that question of God. God, give me the wisdom. Help me see how I should respond in situations when I should be using my power, my authority, my influence, and when I should be humble. Because it's hard to do in this day and age where everything's about I, I, I. Really being able to release that and say, you know what? I'm at the altar. I'm with Christ. He's my priest. He's my king. And that's how we should all approach the altar, uh, following our patriarch, Abraham. So on this blessed and sacred day, I encourage you, you know, think about how we, you know, we've heard the story, I, you, know, you, know, you know, what would Jesus do? I'm asking you to consider what would Abraham do? Follow his lead. He's a father of our church, one of the patriarchs in our church. And so he's leading us through uh, this, this particular, you know, difficult time in history uh, as a leader, as a father, and something that we as, as fathers can emulate and we can follow. God bless you all. Now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. 
for the church throughout the world. May the Lord strengthen faithful communities united in the love of God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in embracing sound and moral principles in solving the issues before them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or in need, May the love of Christ comfort them and give them hope in the promise of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For this Eucharistic assembly, may the Lord help us grow in faith and love, bearing fruit in the manner of our lives and the abundance of our service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all fathers, living and deceased, and for all the intentions we hold dear in our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that seeing the face of God, they may live in everlasting joy with God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, on this feast of the body and blood of Christ, we ask you to fill our minds with devotion to your Son, especially in the Blessed Sacrament. Help us through this celebration to be drawn more closely into your presence, and through our reception of the body and blood of Christ, let us be strengthened in holiness, happiness, and in health. And we offer these in all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so, we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Lawrence, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, our fathers, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory are yours now. now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you. Father. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. Now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please recite with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass has ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And before we depart today, I do have a few announcements. First of all, today being the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, there will be a procession here at Notre Dame. It'll take place at one o'clock this afternoon. It'll be preceded by an hour of Eucharistic adoration. And then at one, we'll march all around the property with the Blessed Sacrament, having benediction at a couple stops. There'll be some singing. It should be about a four or five tenths of a mile walk. There will be some singing, some praying, should be a nice afternoon. If you're able to come today, that would be wonderful. Uh, secondly, I would like to introduce somebody. Uh, Michael, will you come forward? You may have noticed our elector today was somebody new. Um, this is Michael Skanga. He is a seminarian who's been assigned to Notre Dame and St. Bartholomew's uh, for the summer. Uh, he'll be here eight weeks. There'll be a period where he's gone, going to Guatemala to have immersive instruction in Spanish and all that. But for these next eight weeks, he'll be here with us. Uh, he's uh, just ended his first year at St. Vincent's Seminary in La Trobe. And so if all goes according to plan, he'll be a priest in three years. So Michael, welcome to Notre Dame and St. Sparts. The third thing is that I forgot earlier that it was Father's Day today, and so I didn't give all the fathers a blessing. So, with all the fathers out there in TV land, uh, please bow your heads for a blessing. We'll see what I can come up with. Almighty God, we ask you to bless these men who have given us the gift of life, and not only the gift of life, but who have provided for us and provided for us uh, a good example, an instruction in the faith, and have helped us to lead the good and holy lives that we are all called to. Fill our hearts with a sense of gratitude and help us to always treat them with the love, reverence, and respect that they deserve. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so today I hope you all have a happy Father's Day. Maybe we'll see you at 1 o'clock for the Eucharistic procession, but we'll see you next week. So have a good week. Thank you.